Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth Podcast. I'm Jack Smith coming at you today with a solo episode. We're going to be taking a deep dive into the start of Justin Herbert's rookie season. Uh, can I just say, he has been electric. Uh, stats on the season, his team is 1-4. and four. Uh, Thanks in no part to him, he's been, he's been amazing, uh, and he's really... He's really propelled this team from where they were last year, and he's put them in positions to win. Obviously, they haven't been able to get it done, uh, but he's put them in a position to win with 1,542 passing yards over five games, 12 touchdowns to three interceptions, uh, including 67.4 completion percentage. So he's really lighting up the stat sheet. Um, but I want to take a deeper dive into his game so far uh, and go over some of the things that he's been doing well, maybe some things he needs to work on. Uh, but taking a deep dive and analyzing his performance to start his rookie year. There were obviously some knocks uh, on Herbert coming out of college, out of the University of Oregon, uh, that he wasn't accurate enough or that sometimes he was hesitant to throw the ball. Um, but he has proven that he fixed something during his rookie year so far. He's figured it out. Um, maybe that's a reflection on the coaching at Oregon or a reflection on the good coaching uh, here in L.A., but he is – He's been amazing, and he's gone toe-to-toe with some of the best quarterbacks in the league, including Patrick Mahomes in his first surprise start ever. Uh, he's gone against Tom Brady, and he's got against Drew Brees. So, I mean, he has taken on a high level of competition. He's taken on some good defenses. He's gone against some good quarterbacks, and he's gone toe-to-toe with them in every single game, putting his team in a position to win every game he's played so far. Um, and while they are 1-4 and four under him, uh, he's, he has put them in a position to win, which is all you can ask for in a quarterback, especially a young quarterback. Um, but going game by game, being thrown into a start against the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, I mean, that doesn't sound like fun for a quarterback. It doesn't sound like fun for anybody. Yet Herbert comes in, uh, and he's leading the Chiefs for a good amount of the game. Um, they end up losing in overtime because it's Mahomes. I mean, what do you expect? But he finished the game with 311 passing yards, a touchdown, and an interception on 66% completion percentage. Uh, so he played well. Uh, and it's the Chiefs. I mean, there aren't many teams in the NFL that can beat the Chiefs. Obviously, the Raiders did a, a kind of an anomaly performance, but the Chiefs won a Super Bowl last year, and Herbert came in, spot start for Tyrod Taylor, and he he put his team in position to win in his first ever career start, one that he was thrust into, not practicing like he was going to start, uh, not assuming he was going to start. He went in, and he put his team in a position to win against, I'll say it, the best team in the NFL. Uh, and the reigning Super Bowl champs. So Herbert, he came in his first week. Uh, he was always a winner. You know, at Oregon, he, he still won games. But he came in his first week and proved that he could still put his team in position to win in the NFL. In the second week, he backed up that performance too. Uh, they did lose 16-21 to 21 to Carolina. But he still threw for 330 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, uh, completing over 70% of his passes, uh, wiping out that accuracy debate. And then one thing I want to focus on specifically for Justin Herbert is the weapons around him. Uh, and also just the position that he was put in. Uh, one thing that I'm very uh, passionate about, or not passionate about, but something I like to talk about often is which team should draft a quarterback, uh, especially a, a, a project quarterback like Justin Herbert seemed to be coming out of college. There are certain teams that should take on a quarterback like that. And in recent years, we've seen what happens when the wrong team takes a quarterback like that. Look at Dwayne Haskins in Washington. Look at Mitchell Trubisky in Chicago. And look at Sam Darnold with the New York Jets. And even, as it's seeming right now, Daniel Jones with the New York Giants. There are certain teams that just cannot take a project quarterback, or some should not even take a rookie quarterback in the first round of the draft. Because while they do have a glaring hole at quarterback, you cannot thrust a young quarterback into a position that he does not have help around him. If he doesn't have a stable head coach, if he doesn't have a good scheme, if he doesn't have an offensive line or weapons, he might be doomed from the start. I mean, look at the way Sam Darnold and Dwayne Haskins played this season. They have had coaching changes. They've had a subpar offensive line, two of the, honestly, the two worst set of offensive weapons in the league um, and, and turnover at coach. So, and, and obviously their play has reflected that uh, playing like two of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Dwayne Haskins been benched. Sam Darnold looks like he's going to be moved on from by the Jets. The Chargers were an example of the right team to draft a quarterback, especially a project quarterback. They don't pick high in the draft very often, uh, and they have a good stable head coach. They have a good set of weapons, uh, and they have a good offensive line. So they were the right team to go after quarterback in this draft, and I think they found maybe their best fit. Uh, yes, he was a project. Yes, they needed uh, – it was a risk taking him, some would have said, but 
They have the pieces around him and they're in a situation where they're normally a good team. They had one bad year, so they're picking high. They've got the opportunity to draft a quarterback like Herbert and, and they jumped on it, which I think was a smart move. And it's, it's obviously paying off for them uh, as Herbert's on his way to possibly the greatest rookie quarterback season of all time. Uh, it's looking like he could possibly set the touchdowns record that was previously set by Baker, Baker Mayfield in 2018 of 27 touchdowns uh, through, uh, through seven weeks so far, Herbert has 12. So I think it's definitely hittable. I'm not sure he's going to, he's going to touch Andrew Luck's yards record. I think that might be a little bit difficult and, and I'm not projecting him to hit that unless he goes crazy over these next 10 weeks. But I think he has a, a genuine shot at the touchdown record. Um, and for a team that had one bad year and they had a chance to draft a quarterback like that, they really capitalized. And I think that was a great move by Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, but moving on to his next game, they played Tampa Bay, which uh, if you've seen them the last couple of weeks have dominated their opponents and they made Aaron Rodgers look terrible, which is something that no team other than Tampa Bay has been able to do this year. I mean, Herbert jumped out to an early lead uh, and they were, they were really dominating the the Buccaneers. Unfortunately, it didn't end up that way as the Buccaneers just snuck by and won the game by seven, but Herbert completed 80% of his passes, which is ridiculous first of all, for a normal game, but also against this Tampa Bay defense, which has proven to be lethal all year for 290 yards, three touchdowns and one interception with a rating of 137.9 uh, for, for a defense that stifled Aaron Rodgers and the smoking hot Packers. This is ridiculous numbers from a, a rookie quarterback and B really any quarterback in general, completing 80% of your passes in a game is very hard to do. And against a defense this good. And when you're a rookie, that's something you don't see very often. And that just goes to show you how special Justin Herbert is and how special he could be. Um, because there's not, not very many times that you see a quarterback perform that well against that good of a defense when they're that young. And when you see that, uh, it's really eye-opening and it shows you what he can be. He obviously always had the potential, but now you're seeing that. And in his first year, it could be scary for the NFL. Uh, his next game, he took on the New Orleans Saints in what I believe was probably his best game uh, as an NFL quarterback so far, dueling Drew Brees, which is a tough task for anyone. Uh, he completed 58.82% of his passes. It was his lowest amount of completion percentage for the year. Uh, so he did struggle on that aspect, but it was to the tune of 264 yards and four touchdowns with no interceptions. Um, and he led a game-winning drive. He honestly led a game-winning drive before Mike Badgley uh, missed a field goal. And so, look, that's not on the quarterback. That's not on Herbert. Sure, he uh, I think he had a bad throw in overtime, but he shouldn't have been there. He, he put his team in a position to win. Badgley hits the kick. Uh, they win that game. And that's a tremendous performance by Herbert. It already was. Four touchdowns, no picks is a great performance nonetheless. But in a loss, that should have been a win. Uh, most people are going to look at this, this stat sheet at the end of the year and see this as a loss and forget what happened. Um, but Herbert should have won this game. And uh, I believe it was against the Panthers. If they catch a hook and ladder, if Austin Eckler catches the ball, that's another win. So you may be looking at a three and three Justin Herbert instead of a one and or sorry, a three and two Justin Herbert instead of a, a one and four Justin Herbert. So his season has been ridiculous, but it's, it's crazy to think that he could have two more wins better had two plays gone a different way. And that performance takes us to his most recent game where he got his first NFL win, played the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, yes, they're not a good team, but a performance like this nonetheless cannot be denied. Uh, he went for 347 yards, completing 62 percent of his passes three touchdowns, including 66 yards on the ground and a touchdown. It was the first time that we've seen him really completely dominate a game uh, and, and just dominate the opponent. Yes, he played well uh, but in all the other games, but this time they, they dominated the Jaguars uh, throughout the whole game, and he didn't let up. Uh, there were some games where, yes, he wasn't able to finish it. He did put his team in position to win, but still a win is a win. He wasn't able to finish it. This game, however, he left no doubt. Uh, and they beat the Jaguars by 10 in the end. And it was also the first game we've seen him be completely mobile. 66 yards on the ground and a touchdown. It's no slouch performance for a quarterback. And we saw that in the Rose Bowl. He was able to do that against Wisconsin to get his legs moving and get in the end zone through his legs. He's got two rushing touchdowns on the season. But this was the first time we've seen him, you know, really influence a game with his legs. 66 yards on the ground and a touchdown to go along with these passing numbers uh, made for a ridiculous game against the Jaguars. It was good to see him be rewarded with his first win. But I kind of wanted to get into my biggest takeaways so far. Obviously, we looked at the stats. We looked at each game performance. These are the takeaways I have so far for his rookie year, uh, including good things and maybe things he can work on. Uh, we'll start with things he can work on because I want to finish out on a good note. Uh, really, yes, I've mentioned the fact that 
he, you know, he should have won games uh, and that he should have more wins and he's put his team in a position to win. But uh, games like the, the Panthers game, they only put up 16 points. Uh, and yes, if they hit the hook and ladder, then he's got to win. But as a quarterback, I'd like to see you take care of inferior opponents like that uh, and, and, w- and win a little bit earlier and make it, make it a for sure thing that you're going to win. I think that, yes, he almost did win, but a team like Carolina, especially with Christian McCaffrey out, I believe he was out after week one. Um, you've got to win that game and you got to win it a little bit earlier if you want to prove that you are the, you know, the team to beat and the player to beat at quarterback. Yes, he's a rookie, so I'm giving him a pass, but when it starts getting later in your career, you've got to win games like that because that's a team the Chargers should beat. It's a team Justin Herbert should beat. Uh, and while it was close, it wasn't close enough. Um, and another game like the Buccaneers, he got a big lead and the Buccaneers had to play from behind. Justin Herbert wasn't able to close out that game well enough. They got a big lead uh, and it seemed like they maybe let off the gas a little bit. So I want to see him be able to a finish games and be in games that he should win because they should have beaten the Panthers. I think everyone knows that. And I think they're definitely a better team than the Panthers. And I want to see him be able to win that game, but also close out against the Buccaneers. But really there's not a whole lot of negative to his rookie year so far as he's been incredible and I've been impressed uh, with every game that he's played so getting into some of the positives I think he's really he's really quieted the critics uh, who pointed out his accuracy issues in college Uh, and he honestly looks like two different quarterbacks Um, I had him as a second quarterback in the draft solely based off his potential and because I thought he'd be able to figure it out in the NFL Um, but really if he looked like that senior year Justin Herbert I'm not sure that we're getting this at all we might have had a guy who was even even on touchdowns and interceptions instead of what he is now 12 to three, but he, he seemed to have fixed something. He seemed to have fixed his accuracy, his eyes, reading a defense. He's been playing a lot better uh, and, and he's been more aggressive. He's been able to take the deep ball to Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, uh, but he's also just been more accurate with the ball as represented in his completion percentage numbers, two games over uh, two games over 70%, only one game under 60%. Uh, That's great numbers from a rookie quarterback, especially one that struggled with accuracy. So I would say my biggest takeaway so far is he's quieted those critics uh, who were talking about his completion percentage and his inability to kind of make the read and make the right throw and throw it downfield. It seemed like maybe the opposite of trigger happy last year. He was a little bit too scared to throw the ball sometimes, but it seemed like he's come into the NFL. He's got some weapons. He's got a good coach. And it seems like he's gotten his mind right. And he's not as scared to throw the ball anymore. And that's, it's really bringing out his true potential, which is something that I really wanted to see from him uh, when he came into the NFL. The second thing is he has the winning mindset. It hasn't gotten done yet, but the fact it's just, there's some undeniable, undeniable, intangible feeling in a quarterback. There's quarterbacks that come in and they can compete. Patrick Mahomes came in and he competed his first full season. Uh, Last year, Lamar Jackson he figured it out, and I mean, even his rookie year, he came in. He didn't play, you know, tremendous. He didn't, he didn't light up the scorecard. Didn't impress anybody a ton, but he won games. There are certain quarterbacks, and the successful quarterbacks in the league have an intangible aspect to their game that it allows them to compete in every game and allows them to win games. And quarterbacks with that, they always prove to do well. The two last, the last two guys I talked about won MVP in the last two years. So. Justin Herbert, I believe, has that intangible aspect to his game where he can compete. He's obviously a competitor. He's proved that in his first uh, five games in the NFL. Uh, And so that's something you don't see out of a quarterback too often. But when you do see it, you know you have a special one and you know you have one you have to hold on to. In the end, Justin Herbert's rookie year, he's, he's proven to be electric. He's proven to light up. In the end, Justin Herbert has proved that he has the potential uh In the end, Justin Herbert has come in in his first five games and proved that he can be a competent, if not superstar quarterback in this league, something that everyone always knew he had in him, but we were just wondering if he'd be able to bring it out. And if you judge off the first five games, it is very obvious he can bring that out. Uh, And hopefully he keeps doing it for the rest of his career, for the rest of the season. Uh, And he very much, he very well could be on his way to an offensive rookie of the year and some rookie quarterback records. Uh, But that's all we're going to have for this episode. Uh, Our links are in the description for our Instagram, for our website, for our Twitter. Make sure you guys check those out. Uh, If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe and turn notifications on so you get notified when there's more content like this. We're going to have more recap episodes for the week that we'll put on the end screen. Um, But really, I just want to hear what down in the comments, what have you thought so far of Justin Herbert's rookie year? 
Has he impressed you? Are there things that you think he can work on? I want to know your guys' opinions, but that's going to wrap it up for me here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.